largely overnight at the start of 2002, the University of Maryland football team had gone from the hunter to the hunted. An ACC championship the year before had raised expectations, but for Maryland, the 2002 season wasn't about meeting those expectations. It was about proving that the team's sudden resurgence was no fluke. This is the story of the 2002 Maryland Terrapins football team, sustaining success. For Maryland to sustain success in 2002, it would have to be done with a new quarterback, without its ACC MVP running back, and with its defensive leader recovering from injury. Hardly an auspicious way to start the season against Notre Dame in the kickoff classic. Maryland stumbled out of the gate, generating just 133 yards of offense and getting shut out by the Irish. Notre Dame delivered Maryland a painful punch to the gut, but opening its home schedule against Akron a week later, Maryland started swinging back. Tonight is a goal. Okay, you go relive your goals or they just words. Quarterback Scott McBrien grew more comfortable in the offense, and a star began to shine on Maryland's special teams. Deep for Maryland, Steve Suter bobbles for a moment and has a crease up the middle. Suter, one man to beat. It's the punter. And he is gone. The first of Steve Suter's NCAA record tying four touchdowns off punt returns in one season led Maryland to sing with a band for the first time. But while Maryland took a big step forward against Akron, it took a step back against Florida State. In defeat, Maryland learned they would have to work even harder to sustain success, and that sometimes the fight to stay on top is even harder than the climb to get there in the first place. The season was over. We had uh, another 10 games to go on our schedule. I didn't see anybody that we couldn't beat. And all I wanted to do was get better each week. And I think they did that. And they, they got more confidence. And they grew. And they became tighter as a team. And um, it's, it's something that I'm very proud about, that they were able to find the strength and the belief in each other to get better and not get down on themselves when everybody else around them was. The media and a lot of people were doubting us out in just in college football, but behind the scenes we were pretty confident in ourselves. We knew that we had a young team and we knew that we needed to get better in, in key positions and when we did, it seemed like the whole season turned around for us. This is what it's all about. We're right here in our home, right here in our house, and nobody takes anything from you. Respect on three. One, two, three. Respect! Respect. Some home cooking the next two weeks spurred that very turnaround as the Terrapins rolled over Eastern Michigan and Wofford by a combined score of 82 to 11. Against EMU, Scott McBrien passed for 300 yards in a game for the first time in his career. But perhaps the most encouraging sign in these two convincing wins was the emergence of the Terrapins rushing attack without the injured Bruce Perry. Unheralded senior Chris Downs crept out of the shadows, scoring a pair of touchdowns against EMU. And against Wofford, he became the Terps' first 100-yard rusher of the season. At the same time, the even lesser-known freshman Josh Allen broke loose with 149 yards and three rushing touchdowns in these same back-to-back -back games. The two dominating wins nudged Maryland's record over 500 for the first time. One of the things I was concerned about was uh, a lot of times when you have a good season, then next year your, the, your team turns to more individual goals and uh, where, you know, what is this going to do for me? And you're never as productive uh, when that happens. And this team didn't do that. I think a lot of people expect a lot out of us this year considering, you know, we went 10 and 2 last year and going to the Orange Bowl. And um, yeah, I think we just had a slow start, you know, we had a, we're a young team at the beginning of the year. I think as the year went on, we grew as a team and we became a lot better as a team. Physical football game today! Let's go! An old saying goes that defense wins championships, and in 2002, Maryland's D approached every game as if the title was on the line. Teams just couldn't score against these Terps, 
and they led the ACC, allowing just 17.3 points per game. The run defense was nothing short of spectacular. Against West Virginia, they held the nation's number one ranked rushing offense to 159 yards below its season average. Making it even tougher, opponents often faced a long field thanks to the punting wizardry of Brooks Bernard. His 42.7 yard average was best in the ACC. And unquestionably, the leader of the pack on defense was E.J. Henderson who won so many postseason awards, he likely needs a new room in his house to hold all the trophies. The All-American had 123 solo tackles to lead the team, almost 10 a game, to go along with 6.5 sacks, two interceptions, and 15.5 tackles for losses. Big play EJ as a finalist for the Butkus, Bednarik, Lombardi, and Nagurski Awards, and graduates as one of the most decorated defenders ever to play for Maryland. One thing I learned about being a turtle was it's a lot of pride, you know, just in the community and college park, and you know, it's, it's something that you know grows on you as you as you stay in the program. You know, when I first came here, I didn't really understand, but you know, when I leave, I understand. You know, I'm a turtle forever. It's just something that grows on you. It's about pride and you know, just love for your school. Riding a two-game winning streak, Maryland went to Morgantown knowing a win would put them back among the top teams in college football. It was a homecoming for former Mountaineer Scott McBride, who silenced the crowd with a 21-yard touchdown run on a beautifully orchestrated opening drive. McBride set the tone, leading Maryland to an amazing 28 points in the first quarter, with each touchdown play at least 20 yards. While it was a day of sweet redemption for the Maryland quarterback, Running back Josh Allen became the first Terps freshman to rush for over 100 yards in a game since 1998. The third time indeed proved to be the charm for Maryland against a ranked foe as they blew out West Virginia by a score of 48 to 17. In that first half we just came out and really you know, brought it on to West Virginia and just played up on all cylinders. We had all cylinders clicking. I think that point right there showed our team what we really can do you know, when our ability is when we really play our top potential. We were able to go down there on the road in a very bad environment and, you know, perform well. We knew at that point we had something we could, you know, generate momentum off of it. When the Terps return home 12 days later to host Georgia Tech, a national television audience tuned in to see if the Terps could keep their recent success going. While the first half was a struggle, with Maryland leading just 6-3 to three at the break, the Terrapins seized control at the start of the second half. Chris Downs scored three straight touchdowns and finished the day with 212 yards on the ground. Scooter Monroe caught five passes for 105 yards. The first 100-yard receiving day for a Terp since 1997. Maryland's defense, led by E.J. Henderson and Madhu Williams, with 10 tackles each, forced a pair of fumbles, and all of a sudden, Maryland was on a four-game winning streak and firmly in second place in the ACC. The Georgia Tech game was another chance for us to play on national TV and, and kind of redeem ourselves for the way that we played in the last other games that we played on national television. With its four-game winning streak giving it new momentum, Maryland saw its success snowball as its ACC trek continued with consecutive road games. For the third straight year, Maryland defeated Duke, scoring every which way they could, rushing, receiving on a punt return and on an interception return. The Trez Harrison had 100 yards receiving a week after Scooter Monroe had done the same. Across the state in Chapel Hill, the Terrapins gave the Tar Heels the same kind of treatment they gave the Blue Devils, this time an even bigger 59-7 blowout win. Incredibly, Scott McBride needed to complete only six passes, with three going to Scooter Monroe for his second 100-yard receiving day in three games. After going 57 games without having a single 100-yard receiver, Maryland now had one in each of the last three games. Chris Downs rushed for 157 yards and four touchdowns, while Josh Allen added two more rushing scores. 
Maryland was rounding into form for a postseason push. The Maryland offense, best in the ACC a year ago, was even better in 2002. A pleasant surprise given all the personnel changes the team faced. Maryland finished second in the ACC in rushing offense and second in scoring. Players seemed to emerge everywhere, from Scott McGrind at quarterback who passed for the eighth most yards in school history, to running back Chris Downs, who became just the seventh player ever to rush for 1,000 yards in a season. But perhaps the biggest impact player on offense was one of Maryland's smallest. Wide receiver Steve Suter was a spark plug who ignited big plays, scoring four touchdowns on punt returns, two on receptions, and one running the ball. Suter generated 1,581 yards of total offense, tops on the team. Combined with the talents of kicker Nick Novak, who converted 21 of 25 field goal attempts, including six of eight beyond 40 yards, the Maryland offense was a lively three ring circus to watch each and every week. Since Ralph Regan's renaissance at Maryland, game day has become an event in College Park. Just a game back of the ACC standings, Maryland's matchup with NC State had the season riding on the line. Remember what I told you on Friday? You're a hell of a football team when you concentrate and when you play to your full ability. Now, this game is about being great. Do you want to be great? Do you dare to be great? You win this game, you got an opportunity to be great. That's what your focus should be. That's what your focus. This is a good football team you're playing. But so are you. So are you. Don't ever forget that. Play to your capabilities, we'll walk home victory. Let's go. The Terrapins were the hottest team in college football, but came out ice cold and trailed 21-7 in the third. Facing the abyss, Maryland never blinks. If a game can symbolize a season, this was it. With guts, bravado, and a dash of improvisation, the Terrapins came up big in the crunch. Let's go, let's get one on the board now, man, okay? Let's make some plays, all right? Focus in, look the ball in, and make plays. Let's go. Bruce Perry in a tailback. He gets the handoff. Has a hole, has a touchdown. Let's go, let's go, let's go! We cannot let up. We cannot let up. You got to keep fighting, you hear me? Mental toughness. We knew it was going to be this type of football game. We knew what we had to do. Now go do it. Rivers zings one. Intercepted. Dominique Foxworth with some blockers. That's the way we play defense. The hell with that, though. You keep, you keep playing hard like that. Let's go. They're wide, Charlie. Got that guy real wide, boy. That five technique is out there. They've trailed since North Carolina State scored on the first possession of the game. Downs bounced off one hit. No, he didn't. Have the football. McBride faked out everybody. The defense, the cameraman, me. Touchdown. Scott McBride's brilliant play fake tied the game in front of a delirious homecoming crowd. We knew we were going to do it, baby. And yet another big play set Maryland up for the win. This to give Maryland its first lead of the game. Hondo the snapper, Brooks Bernard the holder. The kick is up and good! The biggest win of the season was Maryland's seventh straight. We just kept 
battling all day. Things weren't going our way. You know, we needed some breaks when we needed them, and we got them. Had some uh, plays, big plays step up from players on our team. You know, they able to get us in a situation to win that game. They had a lot of hype and starting out 9-0, and and they were supposed to be one of the, the better teams in the country just for us to be able to, to not give up and come back in the fourth quarter like we did. It was impressive, and it gave us confidence we needed to finish the rest of the season. Just how long could Maryland's running streak continue? It didn't get any easier for Maryland in a trip to Death Valley, where the Terrapins hadn't won since 1985. It didn't matter to this team, not with all the obstacles they'd overcome so far. In a statement game on defense, the Terps held Clemson and its fab freshman quarterback to just 211 total yards. On four red zone trips, Clemson netted just four field goals. Scott McBrien threw three touchdown passes and ran for a fourth. At nine and two, five and one of the ACC, Maryland had assured itself of another successful season. Two of the hottest teams in college football met a week later in Charlottesville. And when the Terps took the opening kickoff and scored four minutes into the game, it seemed the destiny was indeed on Maryland's side. But not soon after, Destiny abandoned the Turks. An onslaught of 34 unanswered points by the Cavaliers proved to be an obstacle even the high-flying Terps couldn't overcome. Though the winning streak halted at eight, Maryland still had much left to play for, with Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl officials booking trips to College Park for the season ender versus Wake Forest. Though stinging from the loss to Virginia, Maryland showed no letdown against Wake Forest on senior day, ending their season with a virtuoso performance that validated another year's worth of success in College Park. Maryland put the Demon Deacons away by halftime, with Scott McBrien throwing for 257 yards and a pair of touchdowns in the first 30 minutes. In his final home game, E.J. Henderson recorded 19 tackles, a safety and an interception. The Terrapins were no one-year wonder, finishing second in the ACC. And following their 10th win, they were extended a berth in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in Atlanta on New Year's Eve. Through a demanding 13-game schedule, Maryland continued to build the foundation of what now must be considered one of the ACC's powerhouse football programs. Head coach Ralph Friedgen has produced consecutive 10-win seasons for the first time in school history, while also becoming the first ACC coach ever to win 20 games in his first two years. A senior class of 10 also won 20 of their final 25 games making them the most successful group to leave College Park in over a decade. I've coached 34 years and I've only won 10 games five different times and two of them did at the University of Maryland and I'm very proud of that and I know our players are too. Just what I've done in a Terp uniform has you know made me a better person and you know I everything that I've learned and that I've given to me by this university I'm you know I'm going to take and use to my benefit. I think they proved to the to the country that we weren't one hit wonders. In 2002, the Maryland Terrapins proved quite convincingly that the program is on track for a bright future of sustaining success. See the secret? Huh? You gotta be pretty for game day. We gotta put all the lotion. We say that's the secret. Can't be huh? ashy. You gotta look sweet. You know what I'm saying? Look, look sweet. Y'all <laughs> about looking sweet, huh? No, huh? what happened? Is it magic potion? Hey, Magic potions, sure. magic no, lotion. Sure. This makes you catch a whole lot of balls right here. Do you see all the stuff that I go through with these guys? Do you see the stuff I go through? It, it, look, hey, look, I'm just going to say it like this. The average person, the average human being would quit. But no, I'm a trooper. I'm a soldier. I ain't going to quit. Oh, oh. 